Okay, so today we're doing a steering wheel, expanding on the buttons and stuff I did earlier. So we're going to control a boat. In the end, I'll show you how to be inside the boat. This will work with any interaction toolkit. I'm using Oculus, but I'll make sure that you can use anything. Please like and subscribe and everything is available for download on Patreon. Let's go. So as with the buttons and switches, there is an empty game object which is the steering wheel, and inside here I have the model for the actual wheel. And on the empty game object there needs to be a collider that is trigger and the steering wheel control script. So for the steering wheel model I'm only using a cylinder. Uh, you can use a real 3D model instead. It looks nicer obviously. And inside here I have some uh, just red cylinders for reference points so we can see when we turn the wheel. And I also have snap positions. These are positions where the hand can snap to. And I have one every few centimeters or so. And we also have a directional object. Uh, maybe I should call this the steering wheel directional object. It is outside of the empty game object steering wheel and it's just an empty game object. We use it in the script uh, and you will see how. So let's open up the script. So first off we get the right hand game object which is just the sphere in my case, if you have a hand model, you will drag that in instead. I'm just using spheres as I said. And just drag them into the slots. You need to have a trigger and a collider that is triggered and a rigid body that is kinematic on the spheres and they also need to be tagged player hand. So we have the original parent of the hand. This is private. You don't have to drag it in and the boolean. And we have the same for the left hand. We also have the array of snap positions which we will need to drag in. It's public. So we need to drag them in in the editor. So lock it, get the script and lock it, and this will be zero for you, just like this. So then we just get all the snap positions and drag them in, and there we go. This one you can actually remove. This is an artifact from when I developed this. I will remove it later. I didn't realize when I did this video. So here we have the vehicle, but you could just use instead of a vehicle, you could do whoops. You could do left wheel and right wheel or whatever you want to turn. But in this tutorial, I'm using the I'm turning the whole ship. And if you do left wheel, right wheel, you also have to do left wheel rigid body and right wheel rigid body. So you'll need a rigid body on whatever you're turning. But this is not what we're doing in this script, so I'm going to revert to vehicle. We also have the current uh, steering wheel rotation, which is public, so we can see it in the editor. It's for debugging purposes. So I should probably rename this to current steering steering wheel rotation. And then we have the turn dampening. And this is, if you have this as a very high number, the ship will perfectly follow the wheel at a one to one ratio, a higher number, a lower number, and it will kind of lag behind a little bit, which gives a smoother feel. So, we also have the directional object I was talking about. It's a public variable, public transform, so we need to drag it in in the editor as I showed you. And you also need to make sure that it is placed exactly in the middle of your steering wheel. You can do this by making it a child of the steering wheel, uh, putting 
the positions to 0, 0, 0, and then make it not a child anymore. In the start function, all we have to do is get the rigid body of the vehicle, in my case, the boat, this one. So you need to drag in the vehicle into the vehicle slot. And then we'll only have three functions in the update function, uh, three methods, sorry, in the update method. And we also get the current steering wheel rotation in the update, so every frame. And we have an on trigger stay method. And if the trigger is the player hand, and this is the trigger box. So whenever we're inside here, we can grab the steering wheel. So if the right hand is not on the wheel and we get the down of the right hand, now the button, the grip button, if you do not use the Oculus integration, you change this line of code to whatever your integration toolkit uses for getting the player grip on the right touch controller. We then call the place hand on wheel method with a ref to all these parameters. If you do not know what the what ref is, you can Google it. It needs to be references or it will not work. All you have to do is write ref before. There's nothing else you have to change. So we just populate the shortest distance and the best snap variables with the first available data. Uh, and then we loop through all the snap positions and we check if this snap position is closer to the hand than the right now shortest position. If so, we set shortest distance to this distance and best snap to this snap. So after this loop, we have the, sh the best possible snap position for the hand to snap to. We save the original parent of the hand so that we can replace it afterwards because we need to remove the hand from the right hand anchor in this case. And then we need to replace it when we let go on the steering wheel. So set the best snap to the parent of the hand and the position to the snap position and hand on wheel is true. So this is right hand on wheel or left hand on wheel, depending on what we sent to this method. And then for the left, we do the exact same thing as we did for the right. Next, we want to look at how do we convert hand rotation to steering wheel rotation. So if only the right hand is on the wheel, right hand on wheel is true, left hand on wheel is false, then we get the new rotation, we set the directional object to this rotation and then parent the steering wheel to the directional object. It could be this transform, which is the steering wheel, since the script is on the steering wheel. So this is this transform, and we are going to change the C just like that. If it's only the left hand on the wheel, we do the, op the same thing, but with the left hand. We set the directional object to the new rotation and then parent the wheel to the directional object. If we have both hands on wheel, we get both the rotation, we average them, and then we do the same thing. So to turn the vehicle, we get the C rotation of the steering wheel. And if that is below 360, that means it has gone from zero to minus 360 so we need to add 360 to it to normalize the value and then we set the rotation just like this and we have the turn dampening here and that is as i said so the boat or the vehicle does not follow exactly but we have some delay all right so to release if the right hand is on the wheel and you're using the Oculus integration, you do it like this. Otherwise, you need to change the OVR input get up to whatever your interaction toolkit uses for get up.
and that is the only thing that is integration specific in these uh, in this steering wheel the get button down and get button up so that's the only thing you need to change if we release the steering wheel we set the parent to the original parent we set the position to the original position and of course we also need to set the rotation to the original rotation i did not think about that since i'm using spheric hands so i cannot see the rotation but do like this and the rotation will be correct again and the hand is not on wheel and you can remove this number of hand i'm not using that in the script and i will remove it later and for the left hand we do the exact same thing but instead it's the left hand So resetting the rotation on the left hand as well. And here, if a no hand is not any longer on the wheel, then we set the transform of parent to null. So the steering wheel parent will be null. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this little artifact from me developing this steering wheel, the number of hands of the wheel, because I decided to go with the booleans instead, the right hand on wheel and the left hand on wheel. And just like that. And here in the update function, as I said, we keep updating the current steering wheel rotation. And I use this for debugging purposes to see how much steering is applied right now. Now, if you want to put this inside your boat, you want to drive the boat instead of being an RC boat, and just make the boat bigger, you put the whole table as a child of the boat or the vehicle you want to use. You drag the table to wherever you want it to be. I know this is not where you drive a boat, but I'm, I'm making this quick and simple, and you can move it around later if you feel like it. Then we also need to make the player a child of the boat, so it follows along. And place him in the right position. Now I also did a small change to the button script, it's very small. I made the on public. So that we inside the boat script, or whatever we want to manipulate with the button, can get the button script and use the on variable. So I have a public variable button control and I drag in the button I want and then in the update function if that control is on then then we move the boat. So we also need to make some small changes in the steering wheel script if we want to be inside the boat. We need to say the transform.parent when we release to transform.root which will be the very top of the hierarchy of the steering wheel. So in this case, the table will be the parent again. And we also need to take in the vehicle, dot, uh, the vehicle rotation on Y into consideration uh, when we turn the steering wheel. So instead of a zero on the Y position, you add the vehicle Y. And since the boat is a lot bigger now, the turn dampening should probably be something like 10. And there we go. We are now captains of this chip. That's pretty nice. Now, there's some limitations to this. Uh, when we reach the target rotation, the ship will just stop turning right away, very abruptly. We can fix this by just lowering the dampening the closer we get to the target position i have not done this in the script right now but it's quite simple and i will do that in the final video when i show all of the interaction uh, little buttons and switches and doorknobs and whatever i will create so thank you for watching everything is available on patreon and if you have any questions or issues, ask me in the comment section. Good luck, guys.